Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escafier Online. Welcome to our session this morning. This morning we're going to be making a chilled soup dessert. We're going to be making a pineapple panna cotta. It's going to be sitting in the middle of the soup and then we're going to do a super flavorful raspberry and coconut soup. So this is a really nice um, summertime dessert. It's a nice chilled soup, which you can not only serve this soup for dessert, you could serve it as another course. And soups are great because they're so flexible. You can use them in a variety of courses. You can use them for your first course and you can use a chilled soup, which is nice this time of year, made with all kinds of fruits and vegetables and the classic gazpacho. And you can also serve your soup for dessert, a nice sweet, maybe fruity soup like the one that we're going to make today. And soups are also great for your main course, whether they're warm or cold. And there's just a variety of options out there. And what's nice about soup too, it's healthful too. A lot of soups are a little more um, healthy, so it's not like eating a heavy meal, you can eat a little bit light. So knowing all of that, I wanted to mention one of my favorite books on soup, and it is called The Traveling Soup Pot. This is a great book, and um, there's almost a story to it too, and it's written by a lady, and her name is Mary Chamberlain, and she sits on our advisory board at the school. So she wrote this book, and a lot of the recipes in the book are um, from her travels. She traveled a lot with her husband, who was an airline captain. And this is just a wonderful book, and um, it's great for soups. There's a nice little section on chilled soups like we talked about today. There's a nice melon gazpacho soup. Super great. So this is a good reading book, and it kind of tells the story of Mary's travels. And the book is also forwarded by our very own Michelle Escoffier, the great grandson of August Escoffier. So I really like this book and um, what's nice too is it's an inspiration. If you're ever thinking of writing your own cookbook someday, definitely take a look at this book. It's great for the soup recipes and it's just very inspiring because it's the story of Mary's travels and the recipes that she's had from around the world and there's some great pictures in here too. So the traveling soup pot and um, it's um, a best um, new book and you'll love it. I highly recommend it. So knowing all that, let's get back to our dessert soup. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be making our pineapple panna cotta. Super easy recipe. The panna cotta is the eggless custard. It's so easy to make. I've got some cream on my burner here with some pineapple juice and a little bit of sugar. And we're just going to warm this until it starts to just simmer right before it um, turns to boil. And then we're just gonna add our gelatin, which is the thickener in the recipe. And then we're just gonna pour it in some oiled mold. Super easy to make, we've done this before. So I'm just using some Knox powdered gelatin. If you can't find your gelatin sheets, you can use the powdered gelatin. The um, conversion is typically for one sheet of gelatin, you'll use a half a teaspoon of the Knox gelatin powder. So what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of cold water and I'm softening my gelatin powder and I'm just um, mixing this in a little bit. You just need a little bit of water. Then this is gonna go in the warm mixture. That's when it dissolves and that's when it's going to become active to set the dessert. So it's super duper important to um, first soften your gelatin before you dissolve it. Okay, so let's set this aside. And we'll see how our cream and our pineapple juice is doing. You can make the panna cotta in a variety of flavors, um, just very limitless. Orange would be nice in this recipe as well. You can even do a banana. You could um, puree some bananas, um, lemon, lime, and even the coconut flavored panna cotta would be nice. It would reinforce the flavor in the soup. So. We're gonna let this warm a little bit and then we're going to dissolve our gelatin. So I've got a few molds that I greased earlier. Make sure when you're making the panna cotta that you're greasing your mold. 
So as soon as this is ready to go, then we'll go ahead and start on our soup. It's really easy. We're just going to be blending things together and straining them. You'll love it. Okay, so this is plenty warm. Yep. We're going to go ahead and add our gelatin powder which we softened with some water. Make sure that you're using cold water. And I'm just gonna put this in here and we're gonna just mix it until it's dissolved. You can see it, it's kind of in a big piece now, but it's gonna break up. And just mix it until it's dissolved. Then we're gonna pour this in the ramekins and it's gonna be going in the refrigerator to set for about maybe three to four hours, depending on the size of um, the panna cotta that you're making. You can even make these overnight. If you're doing this for a restaurant dessert, if you're working in a restaurant, hotel, country club, you can make panna cottas a few days ahead of time, and then you can just finish them off during dinners or lunch service. Okay, so our gelatin is dissolved, so we're just going to pour this in our ramekins. Super easy nice eggless custard okay i just have a few ramekins that i prepared so this is going to go in the refrigerator so when we're ready to do our plate up presentation i've got some panna cottas that i made last night and i'll pull those out so let's go ahead and make our soup now for the fun part so we're just going to be using some fresh raspberries if you want, you can use the frozen raspberries. And the recipe that I gave you calls for three cups of raspberries. When you're using frozen raspberries, measure them when they're fro in the frozen state, when they're still um, round and they're not kind of squished down a little bit because that's what's going to happen when they thaw. So it's perfectly fine to use them as a substitute because they're just frozen without any sugar and make sure they don't have sugar in them and measure them while they're still frozen. Okay, so we've just got some raspberries. I've got some lime juice and some lime zest. You can do a lot of variations on this recipe. You can use different juices for different flavors. And I've got some sugar and some cinnamon. It's gonna add a nice flavor to the soup. And I've also got some coconut milk here and we're gonna be blending all of this together. So when I'm using my coconut milk, I like to use a canned coconut milk because um, it has the, um, the coconut, the thickness of the coconut on top and the liquid is on the bottom. So make sure that you've got some of that thickness in there too. So you're going to be blending all of this together and then we'll be straining it and then we'll be adding a little bit of yogurt. And if you would like a little bit more um, coconut flavor, then you can just double up on the coconut juice or the coconut milk. So I'm just going to mix this together a little bit, kind of get it going. Then we're just going to be blending it with our immersion blender. You can use your um, home blender if you like. Just going to blend it really good and then we're going to strain out the seeds. And then we'll be well on our way to our raspberry coconut soup. So it's super delicious and nice and refreshing for this time of year. So let's go ahead and blend this. with our immersion blender. These, these can be a little messy sometimes. Make sure that you're using a container that's kind of deep like this one. You're gonna wanna hold this on an angle. And I'm starting out on a low speed, and then I'll switch over to the higher speed. And if you find that it's splashing a little bit, you can cover it with a towel as well. So it's blending just fine. Let's go ahead and turn it up to higher speed. Kind of holding it on an angle. As you can see, when I'm holding it on an angle, you can see the liquid moving around. If you're holding it straight up, that's not going to happen. So. So to be careful that you're not pulling it out of the liquid, that's when you'll get some splashing as well. But sometimes there's just no way around it. So 
we are going to go ahead and strain our seeds out with a fine strainer. I have a chinois here. Go ahead and put this in a bowl. And then we will almost have raspberry coconut soup. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions. And we're just going to be um, kind of stirring this a little bit until we get all of the seeds strained out and all the liquid passed through. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, if you wanted a little bit more of a coconut flavor, you can skip the, um, the yogurt and just add a little bit extra coconut milk. Sour cream is also nice too if you want to do a little different twist on this. So what's great about these chilled soups is they're like anything else, the flavors are limitless. Strawberry is nice too if you want to do a strawberry variation or really any kind of fruit. So this is just really the basics of the chilled soup. So please let me know if you have any questions. So our soup is looking really good. It's a nice color. And this flavor combination is gonna go really well with the panna cotta. Rum and other liqueurs are nice options too to be added. You could add a little bit of Gramenier or um, perhaps a little bit of rum. And there are also a lot of flavored rums and liqueurs out there. So definitely have fun with your chilled soup recipes and your panna cotta. So we have our seeds strained out. I've got a little bit of yogurt. This is going to add a little bit of lightness. It's going to be adding a little bit of thickness and it's going to lighten the color a little bit too. But like I said, you can um, add extra coconut if you like. Please have fun with your um, your soup recipes. So our soup is looking really nice. It's a nice color, very flavorful. I can smell the raspberry and the coconut, a little bit of lime and cinnamon. You can add a little bit more lime and cinnamon too if you'd like those flavors. So we have a super beautiful raspberry soup. Served chilled. Like I said, you can serve it as your dessert or in your first course as well. So let's go ahead and do a little plate up presentation with our soup, okay? So I just have a soup bowl and um, got it on a plate so it just looks a little bit finished. It's nicer for serving that way too. And I've got some panna cottas that I made earlier. I've got some smaller panna cottas, and we're gonna go ahead and unmold one of these. The best way to unmold these is to um, put them in a little pan of warm water, let the panna cotta warm up a little bit, and then you can just kind of pop it out similar to a jello mold. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this out of here. And then we'll just put it, be putting it right in our bowl. So the edges seem a little bit loose. And our panna cotta is out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put it in the center of the bowl. And then we're going to pour the soup around it just very carefully. I'm going to kind of flood the bowl. And the panna cotta is going to stand out. So it's a really nice center to this dessert. And you can also serve this, um, you know, with a dollop of sour cream or even like flavored sour cream would be nice too. And you can actually pipe the sour cream around in here to make a design. So that's a nice... Um, you know, first course dessert or even a, um, I mean, a first course soup or even a dessert soup. So there we have a nice dessert soup with our pineapple panna cotta in the center. And let's go ahead and finish this. So I've got some pineapple chunks, which is a really nice finish. And this is just a really nice summertime dessert. And you can 
serve it, like I said, for um, many different courses other than dessert as well. You can change it up a little bit and make it even a little less sweet too. And for a warmer version, you could even add a little bit of chicken broth too, and that'll be a nice warm version of the um, raspberry coconut soup. Let's go ahead and um, garnish this up. Maybe we'll put a few more um, pieces of pineapple on the panna cotta. A couple of raspberries. We'll put a few raspberries in the soup as well. And a nice small piece of mint. And I made some macadamia nut cookies earlier. I just took a, um, a short dough recipe and I put some chopped up macadamia nuts on top and you can serve it just like this on the rim. So thanks for joining me today and please explore your chilled soups and don't forget Mary's book, The Traveling Soup Pot. It's a great book. You'll really like it and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.